don't you like it when there's silence in church? You know, I mean, it hardly ever happens. You know, everybody always wants to say something. You know, we got to break the silence. Well, it says, be still and know that I am God. Amen. So sometimes it's good just to be quiet. Um, but anyway, and that doesn't, and that's not indicated for any particular person. <laughs> um, please go with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 20. And I want to show you something that God showed me. Matthew chapter 20. That God showed me a while back. And uh, I might have even preached it here sometime. I don't know. But uh, I, what I do before I go to a place, I spend some time in the prayer closet. And I say, God, what do you want me to say to these people? Amen. Amen. Because you, couldn't, you, you can't just flip and grab something. You don't flip a coin. You ask God. And sometimes, you know, you say, well, because it's God always talk. No, I can't always hear. I can't hear him at will. And sometimes you'll sense that, that prompting. And this prompting was a very strong um, before I, uh, before I start reading the scripture, um, I was ministering at a church of God some years ago, Pastor Henry Marquis, and, uh, and, and I know the church of God is a Pentecostal. There's a couple churches of God. One is not, one is Pentecostal. But this one was Pentecostal. But anyway, it was a Wednesday night service, and I got up, and I preached on healing, that it is God's will to heal you. And, uh, and I thought he was acting a little strange, shuffling in his seat and everything, and I, I didn't know what it was. And anyway, we prayed for the sick afterwards, and God healed some people, and uh, some, some wonderful healings, and... And then after the service, an amazing thing. And I, I mentioned his name because it's going to turn to positive here in a minute. But we've got to go through a little rough road first. Um, he said, uh, after the service, he pulled me on his side. He says, I'm upset with you. I said, why? He says, you said God, it's God's will to heal everybody. I don't believe that. I believe, he says, I believe God can heal, but I don't believe it's God's will to heal everybody. And I said, well, I do. And the thing is, he got up and said that. You know, he took the mic from me after I said amen and got, got done ministering. And he said that publicly. So it was like a public rebuke. He tried to do it very gently. But I thought, whatever, I can take it. Three months later, he called me. When can you come minister at the church? So I'm... I'm kind of booked up. Said, well, so I found, we found a window, and I came. And as soon as I walked in, he says, please pray for me. I have a cancerous tumor uh, in, my, uh, in, 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 my, in my bowels. In my, in, and he says, I'm getting a colonoscopy, another one. They found a tumor. And it looks bad, and would you pray for me? I said, absolutely. We prayed for him, and he was going to get another colonoscopy in two days, and then they were going to do the operation. Well, they did the other next colonoscopy two days later, and it was gone. Amen. He was Hallelujah. totally healed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Suddenly, he believes God can heal everybody. It's yeah. funny how experience changes your theology. Amen. Amen. See, I'm convinced so many people today in the body of Christ are tentative in their faith. When you pray for something, don't pray for something that's possible. Pray for something that's impossible. Amen. Amen. Lift your vision higher. Amen. Don't be a Casper milk toast. Don't be a little wimpy Bo peep in your faith. Uh -oh. Get wild in your faith. Amen. God would rather tame a wild horse than raise a dead one. Amen. 
You say, I might get out of hand. Good. Get out of hand. God, will, don't trust me. The world will bring you back down. Get wild for God. We need some crazy people for God. So what, what will people think? Who cares? That's the problem. We care what people think. Stop being politically correct. And again, I know it's not you. You're not like that. It's those other people. In uh, Matthew 20, look at verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard, and he went about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle. And he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right you will receive. So when, the evening, had, when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those who were hired about the eleventh hour, they received a denarius each. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more. And they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have, become, who have, who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give to this last one, this last man, the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Have you ever read the Bible and didn't understand it? If anybody ever tells you they know everything about the Bible, run from them. They're loony. Because... Uh, we're still trying to grasp this majestic book. There's so much in there. It's, 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 it's inexhaustible. The, the virtue, the truth, the revelation. You can't read this like the New York Times. There's something between every line. So uh, one day I was reading this, a parable, and I, I just couldn't get it. It drove me crazy. And I don't know about you, but sometimes we, I believe we're called, when we get in the Word of God, to camp out some places. Just camp out there with some text and stay there for a while until you get it. Because it's hard to just read the Bible and absorb it and understand it. I think we've got to meditate on it, pray about it go over it. So I begin to read this thing. Something began to bug me about it. It irritated me because I can understand why these guys are upset. The people who worked all day and agreed for denarius, then comes along people at 12 o'clock noon and then three o'clock and then five o'clock. Some people walk, worked one hour and they got the same pay as the guys who worked 12 hours. Now, that's not fair. I'd be upset, too. I'd be mad. But Jesus is a different kind of master. He said, are you evil because I'm good? I want to give this guy who worked one hour the same thing as I gave to this guy who worked all day. What are you griping about? You got your pay. You agree to it. Watch out. God will hold you. So... This irritated me. And I began to read this thing over and over and over and over. 
I said, God, there's got to be something here. There's got to be more to it than that. It's not just that you're a good guy, that you're super sweet and merciful and loving and you felt bad, but there's got to be more to it than that. So I must have read this thing a hundred times over a course of some weeks and meditated on it. I said, God, what, what is this? And I want to present something before you that the Holy Spirit showed me about this, and it concerns the last days. We're in the last days. Now, I said, I said, God, are you telling me what I think you're telling me? See, I'm convinced in these last days, the days are coming so, they're, they're so short that God is going to pour out a not fair anointing. It's simply not fair. You ever want, you ever see someone moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you want it that? There's nothing wrong with that. You read 1 um, Corinthians 14. Desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. He tells you to do it. There's nothing wrong with wanting that. It's the people who slobber after it and who are weird and strange and drop into a trance every 10 minutes that God doesn't enjoy. You don't have to get weird to move in the power of God. But I'm convinced God wants people to move in this not fair anointing in these last days because time is short. And he's going to pour out this not fair anointing on people who don't deserve it. Like you and me. Come on. Amen. Who of you deserve to be saved? Right. None of you. That's right. We are all, listen, if you knew everything about me, everything I've ever done, every no good, dirty, rotten deed, you probably wouldn't have invited me. Of course, if I knew everything about you, I probably wouldn't have come. <laughs> but here's the kicker. Yeah. He knows everything about you and loves you. Amen. That's the thing that keeps Al Thomas going. I'm loved. Amen. He's proven it to me over and over again. I mess up. I make a mistake. I did it. And then he says, I love you. Glory to God. Oh, come on. That's God. Amen. Now, I'm not telling you to mess up so he'll tell you. He'll He's going to love you no matter what. He's going to track you down like a hound dog and love you up. He can't help it. He's a love machine. <laughs> you know, you talk about these. Re I do not watch reality shows. They're so stupid. You know, I, I, I was at a church one time. We went out to lunch, and I respect these people so much, the pastor and his wife. And I said, oh, you changed your hair. I said this lady. She says, oh, the Kardashians. It looks just like, what? <laughs> the spirit of slap almost came upon me. <laughs> Kardashians? What? I, I, th I thought... Honey, I just lost respect for you. I didn't tell her that, but... So anyway... It says in this, we just read this, this passage. He said, Jesus said, I'll do whatever is right. You go out there and work, 12 o'clock or 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and I'll do whatever is right. He always does what is right. And what his right is, is full of mercy and compassion. I'm convinced God wants to use people you'd never think he'd use. See, we have a tendency to judge people, to put them in a box, especially when we know their background. We know they've messed up. We know perhaps they have a dubious history. We know they've got a reputation that isn't that great. But isn't it funny God loves to use those kind of people? 
I love it. See, whenever you, whenever you have that idea in your mind that, you know, we know about him and, and you think God will probably never use him, I'm convinced somewhere up in heaven God whispers to an angel, go down and use that person. <laughs> Just to show you that God doesn't think like we think. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I got some problems. I got some serious problems. You know, I mean, you ever want to, you know who really knows a man's problem? The wife. She knows everything. And thank God she doesn't yap. At least not mine. But God knows everything about us and loves us. Now, this not fair anointing, here's what it does. Um, see, some people, now I got I to gotta caveat this, I got to say this. Some people have paid a great price for the anointing of God. I remember when I first started celebrating his life, God told me to fast a long time and cry out to him for this ministry, celebrating his life. Told me to go on a long fast and gave me certain instructions and so on and so on. Not that you're paying a price. You're not buying anything by your fasting and, 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 and denying yourself. But it's just some people he tells to do that. And, but this not fair anointing is going to fall on people who tried to fast, but they failed. Did you ever try to fast and you blew it? Yeah. Amen. You know, be honest. He knows. You're in, you're in church. You can't lie. And so many of us have tried to do things for God and we fell short. Well, you're a perfect candidate now to be used by God. Because you know you're not perfect. You know you've stumbled and you fell. And God says, good, I can use you. Hallelujah. See, this is a message to encourage you. To get you to the place to believe that you're not that one that God's not going to use. You're the one he's going to use. See, if you're waiting for God to raise up some army in these last days, forget it. You're it. You are it. Amen. He's got nobody else. There's no plan B. You're it. Amen. So you got to step up. And go out. They say, what if I fail? Then get up and start again. Amen. Amen. I have failed so many times. It's almost like, well, what am I going to fail at today? I am not a negative person. I'm an optimist. I'm a positive person. But at the same time, I'm a realist. I, I, here's a little tip for you. Don't have regrets. I have no regrets. I'm not saying I'm not sorry for some of the mistakes I've made, some of the hurts I've caused. I'm not saying I, 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 that I don't regret that, but I don't live in the land of regret. Yes. Amen. I am forgiven. Yesterday is yesterday. It's over with. It's done. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Forget it. There's no, I can't change it. Yes. And you've got to live today. Live for today. Yesterday, you'll never recapture again. Yes. And whatever mistake or victory you had, it's over with now. And it's in the books. Amen. And one day, you'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and he'll straighten this whole thing out. And this time, when he's coming back, by the way, he's carrying a clipboard. This time... He's coming back, not as the mild and meek and gentle Jesus. He's coming back as the warrior. He's coming back as the king. He's coming back to take over. Like it or not. Like it or not, everybody, and, and it says the ungodly will run for the hills and say, let the rocks fall on me because the glory will be so great. That's he's coming this time and he's a little upset yes, he is. because he's given all these thousands of years of grace and many have not yielded to it. So he's going to say, you don't want to, okay, time's up. Mm -hmm. Say, so, well, that sounds kind of mean. 
the church age has got to end sooner or later. And then you enter into the thousand year reign of Christ. And this thing, this whole, one day you're not going to have apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers. You're not going to have that. We're all going to be just rejoicing and who knows what we're going to be doing, but the church age is going to end. We, now is the time to work. Now is the time to press in. Now is the time to take that hill. Now is the time not to give up. Amen. This is it. Amen. I know it's hard. I could stand here and tell you all the problems that I've had, all the junk that I face. I could tell you. But what good does that do? Let's not dwell on the, the negative. Let's dwell on the positive. Now, I'm convinced God is saying this. The not fair anointing will fall on what we call the lesser ones. The ones that we would never think that God would use. The ones that we think are not as strong as the other people. And when we see that happening, we should not be judgmental. When you see God start using people that you never thought he would use, don't let it bother you. Because it will bother some. I love the kind of people that God chooses. Weirdos. <laughs> just people that are just bizarre. <laughs> like you. That's right. <laughs> and me. See, some people look at other people who are using prophecy and healing and gifts, and they go, why, why, go, why doesn't that happen to me? It's going to. Time's too short. God's got to pick somebody. You happen to be available. You're standing around idle. That's what it says in the Word. They were standing around idle. Jesus said, what are you doing? You're hanging around doing nothing. Come here. Right. I think I'll use you. Amen. That's what he's doing. Amen. In the church. To, see, I'm not, dis, I'm not disappointed. I'm not discouraged about the church. I, I'm, I'm encouraged. Amen. Amen. I go to churches and I, sometimes I, there's such a, 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 a dismal, like a cloud over them. Like, gee, you know, we're, we're, it's just hard and nobody's coming out and... We're, Get away from that kind of thinking. Amen. If nobody's going to get excited, you get excited. Praise God. I went to it. We go to all kinds of different denominations. And years ago, I was invited, I don't know how, to a, to a Baptist church. And, and they were not Pentecostal. But somehow I got in there. And they mixed up, they got the schedule mixed up in the bulletin. It was supposed to be one day, but the bulletin said another day. So I went there and nobody showed up but the pastor and his wife. I just figured, I just preached like there was 10,000. And then I gave an altar call. I could have swore he moved. But he didn't. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many people. <laughs> See, God blesses even the ungodly. God blesses the, the son. Everybody, even the ungodly, enjoy the sun, a beautiful day, and the rain. Amen. God blesses even the ungodly people. But we, as Christians, are supposed to be conduits of blessings for people. Yes. Every day you get up, you should look in the mirror and say, God, who do you want me to bless today? Amen. Who do you want me to minister to today? Yes. Who do you want me to touch today? Hallelujah. Who do you want me to pray for today? Constant. Every time I get, I say, God, I'm going to give something away. Almost every day, I make it a, a, a concerted effort. I don't do it every day. I fail sometimes, but almost every day, I give something away. Amen. Give something Amen. away, whether it's money, a word of encouragement, or a, a blessing of some kind. People need encouragement yes. today. Yes. This world is bonkers. People need a word of encouragement, a pat on the... You'd be amazed. 
how far somebody can go with a kind word and a word of encouragement. Just a pat on the back. You know, you know you're doing pretty good. You, do, you look good. To, you're doing okay. I'm not saying be phony. But I'm saying people need to be encouraged today. God, you know, concerning giving, don't worry that offerings have already been taken. But <laughs> concerning giving, God, God reminds me of this huge guy with this great big coat. And it's got a zillion pockets, big, small, tiny, all kinds of millions of pockets. And if you just get a little close to him, he'll take something out of one of those pockets and give it to you. Amen. He's a giving machine. Yes. He can't help it. And we are to be like-minded. Yes. Always be Amen. giving to people. You want to get blessed? Give. Amen. Amen. Always be giving to people. And, uh, you know, when... when Sometimes I'm ministering to people and the Holy Spirit will say to me, uh, this person's about to get a financial blessing. And I'll always say, don't give, it to, don't give any of it to me. I don't want it. Because there's this integrity thing that people got to walk in. God is a giving God. And we need to be just like him. See, we need to be imitators of Christ. God gave the Son. The Son gave the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives gifts. It's all give, 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 give. And we need to be giving to one another constantly. So, um, sometimes, like in the last 10, 15 years, there's been a lot of talk about the five-fold ministry, apostle, prophet, pastor, um, you know, teacher, evangelist, and, and, and I believe in that fivefold ministry, but sometimes it gets out of hand where people want titles, and that bothers me. You know, sometimes I'll get a request to be put on the mailing list. I am apostle so-and-so. You could take a rock. Rick Joyner said this. If you took a rock and you threw it at a group of Christians... Odds are you're going to hit apostle or a prophet or a bishop. <laughs> I was in Baltimore one time at a big office building. You know how they have these big indexes behind these glass things in this big lobby. And I was looking for this office and, and, and I couldn't find it. And I saw a dapper looking fellow over on the side. And I said, he might, looks like he knows something about this building. And I went over there and I said, excuse me, sir. I'm looking for so-and-so. He directed me right away to it. And he said, up there, third floor, whatever. I said, well, okay, thank you. I said, and he was dressed in like a, a tan thing and a gold little um, label with his name on it. And, and uh like a khaki thing he had on. And I said, excuse me, I, I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a visual control coordinator. A what? A visual control coordinator. I said, what is a visual control coordinator? You know what he said? I wash windows. <laughs> I said, I didn't know what to say. I was stunned. I mean, it's, it, it, basically it made him feel better to be called that. I couldn't believe it. So these titles, you know, if you're a prophet, trust me, your fruit will show that. Amen. If you're an apostle or whatever, your fruit will show that. You don't have to put it on your business card. I know there's nobody here like that. It's those other people. In these last days... Don't stumble when you see God using the Simon Peters of the world. Amen. Amen. Remember Simon Peter, my favorite apostle. 
You know why he's my favorite apostle? He's the only guy that kept really goofing up. I can relate to this guy. Now, you got to imagine this scene. Jesus comes, grows up, becomes a man, baptized in the Holy Ghost, preaches for three, three and a half years, crucified, rose from the dead. He says, go to Jerusalem and tarry there until you be endued with power from on high. So they go. He said, don't, don't go anywhere. Don't start preaching. Don't do nothing until you do it with power from one high till you get the Holy Ghost. So they go back to Jerusalem. You know the story. And they're in the upper room. Holy Spirit falls. Now, there's a big commotion because it's the season of Pentecost, a big festival. And there's thousands of people. It's 9 o'clock in the morning, and they're making a big ruckus up there and speaking in everybody's language, in tongues. They're, they're acting like madmen. They, they were called drunk. I like that part. I mean, talk about getting wild for God. You know, have you ever been accused of being drunk, but it was God? So that just tells me you can have permission to let loose. But so... They're up there acting really strange. And somebody says, what's going on? Are you guys drunk? Now, here's the thing. Here's the pivotal moment. This is the beginning of the church. You ever notice the first sermon ever preached was a Pentecostal sermon? Amen. I like that. Amen. Amen. Now, listen. Here's the thing you can't miss. Somebody had to get up and explain and preach the first sermon of the church. I would have never picked Peter. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Exactly 50 days prior to that day, he denied he ever knew Jesus and cussed about it. And Jesus said, he's a rascal, but I want him. You ever felt like a rascal? He wants you. Amen. I would have never picked. See, if that was today, 50 days prior, denying you ever knew Jesus and cussing about it, you'd be put in rehab. You'd be away for a year in most denominations if ever called back. But Jesus says, eh, 50 days is enough. He's my preacher. I mean, think about the love of Jesus and who he picks. He picks Peter. I, I, wouldn't have, I would have picked John, the, the, God, the apostle of love, who laid his hand on the breast, his head on the breast of Jesus and said, I'm the one that Jesus loves. But you didn't preach the first sermon, did you? Jesus picked the down and outer. Come on. I got a feeling he'll pick you. So don't be surprised when you see him using the Simon Peters of the world. Amen. Wow. Amen. This Jesus. Hallelujah. See, this Jesus, oh, the more you think about him, he's quickly, we're almost done here because we want to minister now. God says, I'm convinced in these last days, don't stumble when you see him using murderers and prostitutes. Did you know that most of the Old Testament and most of the New Testament were written by murderers? Moses was a murderer. David was a murderer. Saul was a murderer. I'm not saying go out there and kill anybody. But I'm saying he uses down and outers. 
He uses the rejects of society. He uses those who don't feel qualified. God can handle their past. Can you? Oh, I like this, Jesus. God's looking for some people with tarnation. God's looking for some rehabs. God's looking for some down and outers. God's looking for some people who just don't seem to qualify, who seem to have failed in everything. Well, you're a perfect candidate for Jesus. Praise God. Oh, Amen. man. Every, uh, this, uh, this is not false humility. This is the gospel truth. I'm amazed. I'm still amazed that he uses me every time to this day. I'm amazed. I can't get over it. Why? Because he is love. Because he is merciful. Because he's not looking for the smooth, suave, and sophisticated He's looking for the normal Joe, the normal person, the person you don't have to have more degrees than a compass. You don't have to have, get all the education you can, but that doesn't qualify you for nothing. I know some people that got so much education, it's running out of their ears, but they can't hear God. Lastly, one time, um, there was this, this couple we know that went to a Baptist, they were spirit-filled, but they felt led to go to this Baptist church, and he, the Baptist guy was teetering between Pentecost, spirit-filled and not spirit-filled, and, and they went there, and they felt led to go there, and, and there was this couple there that was trying to have a baby, and they couldn't, so the couple that I knew called me up and said, would I come down to, with the pastor in, their, in this place, in, in this couple's basement, and pray for the woman and the couple that they would have a baby? And I'm so careful about that kind of stuff, you know. And so we, we went, and the Baptist pastor was just, you know, he knew we were Pentecostal. And I think he was waiting for us to fall on the floor and foam at the mouth and roll over. And I wanted to do it just for kicks. You know, just, just to do it, you know. But I, I held back. And... So, so anyway, we get him what they call the hot seat, you know. We put two chairs there, him and her, and, uh, and the Baptist pastor comes over, and then the couple that we knew, and then, you know, Sherry and, and me, and we start praying. And just pray that the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply, and you've never taken that back, God. And quoting all these scriptures, and we pray just for about 10 minutes or so. Nothing, we felt, we saw nothing, no vision, no heard nothing. It was just, just a plain prayer, nothing, didn't even sense anything, and so we left. So about three months later, the uh, Baptist pastor called me, and he said, Al, he says, uh, did you hear about Marcia, the woman who wanted to get pregnant? I said, no. He says, she's pregnant. I said, well, that's great. He says, Triplets. <laughs> God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. God. Now that was years ago. But I'm telling you, we got to think big. Yeah. Amen. We got to think beyond anything, Amen. you know? And uh, God can do this intro vitro thing way beyond anything that medical people can do. Amen. Amen. Um, close your Bibles with me for a minute. We were up at um, Kettering. I'm telling you this to stir your faith now. We were up at Kettering Assembly of God on, in Western Maryland near Oakland. Some years ago, Pastor Bruce Craig, he is now in, um, well, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I'm Kettering, uh, not Kettering, Crellin Assembly of God in Western Maryland. 
And he is now in Kettering, Kettering Assembly of God in D near Dayton, um, Ohio, where we're going in a couple months. But when he was in Western Maryland, uh, we used to go there and do Sunday a.m. and p.m. and Monday nights. And anyway, we were ministering one, Monday, one, one sat Sunday night, and a bunch of people came up for prayer, and we began to pray for people. And uh, this one older, cranky guy, a curmudgeon, you know what a curmudgeon is, a cranky old man. And, uh, and he admitted it, and God even loves them. And he came in, and there had to be 45 people there coming up for prayer. Now, I did not know this, but he, he, was a, he told me this later. He was a metal worker. He had a little shop, and he was drilling through a piece of plate um, steel, and he didn't have glasses on, and these little curly cube metal things came up, and one flew in his eye. It went right into his eye. I didn't know this. So he comes up, and we're praying for people, and he couldn't get to us. So while, while we're praying for other people, suddenly, and he had this patch on this, because they, he went to the hospital. It happened a few, days prior, a few days prior. He went to the hospital, and they said, we're going to have to take that out. You might lose your sight. He says, I'm not going to do it. Forget it. And they just put a patch on there. I said, good luck. And he came to the church. And while we were praying for other people, suddenly he felt this piercing heat in his eye. And he went like this. And he pulled that thing off. And the metal thing came out in his hand. And his eye was completely healed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, God. I tell you that because of this. It doesn't matter. He just got healed listening to other people getting prayed for. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise it doesn't God. matter awesome. if you don't even get your hand, hands laid on you or something. Lastly, and I put this in this current newsletter, we were at Romney Assembly of God. Pastor Jim Mal, a couple weeks ago. And we prayed for some people after the service, I'm closing the service. This little sweet old lady comes up and she says, I got, a, I got a testimony. And I hand her the mic and she says this. She says, you were here last year and I, uh, had, I was in a car accident and I had a serious neck problem. And was in pain all the time. She says, you prayed for me, laid hands on me, nothing happened. Three days later, she's sleeping. She wakes up early in the morning, and she feels hands on her throat. She said, I knew it was the hands of Jesus, and it twisted me this way and this way and this way. I haven't had a pain since, she said. Here's the point. When you get prayed for in a minute, if you don't get it right away, don't worry. So many times we've seen people, three or four days later, a week or two later, they get it. Why? That irritates me. Because I want it to happen now. But if you don't get it, don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is so precious. It's so true. We thank you for these stories, these, these true parables and stories and testimonies from your word and from today. We thank you for that, God. Father, we pray that even as your word says, Jesus, you said, as the Father hath sent me, so send I you. You said that. You said that you would not leave us, but you would be with us at the end of the age. And that you would give us your Holy Spirit. And the same works that you did, we would do. 
And we know, Father, that the greatest miracle there ever could be is not a healing or a miracle, but a saving of a soul. And with every head bowed and every eye closed in this place right now, not an eye looking around, if you came, I've got a couple questions. If you came into this place and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to tell you, you need to be introduced to Jesus Christ. He loves you. And he wants to come in to your life and invade your life and take over. And you'll be ever so glad. If you've never accepted Jesus and you want him to come into your life right now, put your hand up in the air. Just put your hand up in the air. I just want to make sure, just in case. There's one hand. I see it. God bless you, brother. God bless you. I want everyone to say this with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I surrender my life. Jesus, come in. Save my soul. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. I want to live for you now. I want to be dead to myself and alive to you. Use me. I'm yours. Now I want to ask one more question with every, every eye closed and every head bowed. If you came into this place and you want that not fair anointing, you want to be used not to draw attention to yourself not for prideful reasons but you want to be used for the glory of God in ministry gifts of healing of prophecy of miracles of the word of wisdom the word of knowledge if you want to be used in those gifts if you want that anointing for these last days put your hand up in the air good for you Good for you. Good. Good. Now everybody, say this with me. Lord Jesus, I want this anointing. I want it badly. Not for me, but for your glory. Use me in a mighty way. Holy Spirit, fall on me right now. Come gentle spirit and fill me up like I've never been filled before in Jesus name now let's just wait on the Lord for a moment let's just wait on the Lord for a moment thank you Lord thank you Lord there's someone here you've got eye problems you've got an infection in your eye God wants to heal you today is a problem with your eye. God wants to heal you today in Jesus' name. There are more than a few people who've got hearing problems. God wants to heal you today. He wants to open your ears. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know we, before the service, there was a man with a hip problem. There are people, other people with hip problems. God wants to heal you today. This is, a, this is a dynamic time. The presence, the healing presence of God is in this place. I'm telling you, the healing anointing is in this place. Anybody who is in physical pain, put your hand up in the air. Stand up. Stand up. If you're in physical pain, come down here quickly. Come down here. Watch what God does. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here's how it's going to work. This is not a one-man show. Thank you, Jesus. 
We're all going to do this together. We're going to pray for all these people here. Say, gee, that's a lot of people. I don't believe Jesus just went by and tapped them on the head and moved on. I'm not criticizing anybody, but he spent time with them. He's a relation God. And what's going to happen with all, all these people came up with pain. Listen, this is a pain-free zone. Pain-free. God did not give you the pain, but he wants to take it away. Now, as I'm talking right now, God is beginning to minister to people right up here. As I'm talking to you, some of you, the pain is starting to leave. The pain is starting to leave with some of you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke the spirit of torment, the spirit of pain. I command it to go. Get out. Get out in Jesus' name. Everyone who has pain in their body standing up here, I command that pain to lift up off of them and go. Get out in Jesus' name. Get out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, why did you come up? What is your name? Stretch your hands towards Anora. And now do me a favor, Anora. Just put up with me. Don't pray. Don't say one word. Just be still. Be still, because God's going to touch you. I just want you to get this. Touch. 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 Okay, now you're getting it. Just be still. Touch. Touch. Good, 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 good. Good. Thank you, Lord. Why did you come up? In the name of Jesus, touch. Father, thank you for healing my sister. She will not be the same when she leaves this place. Touch. Touch. Thank you, Lord. Get her. Get her. Get her. Get her. Get her. Help. I need help. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Good. 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 Okay. Good. Why did you come up? You in pain right now? Wait a minute, you're in pain right now? What is your name? Sherry. Sherry? Okay. This is Sherry. She says she's in pain right now. What would Jesus do if, if, if suddenly he appeared in front of Sherry? He'd heal her. 